All right, I think we can uh, start. So here I present Dr. Maren uh, Westermann. Um, she's going to speak about building diverse open source communities, learning from PyLadies Berlin's monthly open source hack nights. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, first of all, thank you everyone for coming. Um, a few words about me, so who am I? Um, I, oopsie, I hold a PhD on the intersection of agricultural and environmental science from the University of Queensland in Australia, and then transitioned to data science and machine learning. I've been working in that field for about five years. Currently work for Deutsche Bahn, the German railway company. And um, I've been an active open source contributor since 2020, and since 2021, I organized the, or co-organized the PyLadies Berlin um, meetups, especially the uh, monthly mentored open source hack nights. And since about a month, I'm part of the Scikit-Learn contributor experience team. So I would like to start by telling you a bit about my own open source journey. So in early 2020, I relocated from Australia to, back to my home country, Germany. And I was looking for a job, and a friend of mine recommended to me to make some open source contributions to uh, strengthen my professional portfolio. And I thought, that's a really good idea. And then I was like, where do I actually get started? And I went to a women in machine learning and data science meetup, and Noah Tamir, the organizer, one of the organizers, you, uh, some of you probably know her, she recommended to me to contribute to scikit-learn, given that I have a machine learning background. And I thought That's, that sounds like a really good idea. And she said that one of the maintainers uh, lives in Berlin, and uh, I could re out, reach out to him, and he could help me with um, making contributions. And so that's what I did. And we caught up in the cafe, and he helped me. And then two days later, the pandemic hit. And all the companies I was applying to, they went on a hiring freeze. And um, so I had lots of time. And um, I tried to make more contributions to Scikit-Learn, but I was really struggling. I was on my own. Like, you couldn't really catch up with anyone. And um, so I managed to stay active a little bit, but I was struggling because I was struggling to find easy issues to work on. Um, because generally they were taken pretty quickly, and um, so yeah, it was it was hard for me. And then Data Umbrella, they are um, an organization that helps people with becoming active in data science. Um, they organized a sprint, contributing to Scikit-Learn sprint. So a sprint is a kind of workshop, and it was supposed to be in New York, but because of the pandemic, they made it online, which was really helpful for me because it meant that I could participate. And that's what I did. And um, so what they did was that they set aside easy issues that, um, co that helped um, con uh, new contributors to get started with the project. And that was really helpful for me. So I had a list of things that I could work on and that was manageable for me. And so that really helped me with um, becoming active. And also the person living in Berlin, like he also helped me with them um, staying active. Um, but at some point, companies um, loosened the hiring freeze, and I really needed a job at some point. And so I was job hunting, and as you can see, like over time, I made less open source contributions, and then I had a new job, or finally a job again in November 2020, and then I was really struggling to stay active um, because of the new job. And then in 2021, Data Umbrella organized more um, contributing to Scikit-Learn community sprints in February and June and also in October. And I was part of these, but I wasn't really doing much myself anymore. I was more helping with, um, I was more helping other people to become active contributors, but I was really struggling myself to stay active. And so at some point I was like, okay, what's, what's the problem here? I want to stay active. Um, and at that point it wasn't really a technical barrier anymore or an educational barrier anymore. It also wasn't a time barrier, like I could, I could make time available. So I was like, okay, what, what's the problem? And I thought, I think I'm really lacking a community. And so I made a resolution to change. So first of all, I was like, no, I really want to contribute again to Scikit-Learn and I, like, I want to do this and I want to build a community. And so in 2022, I started organizing monthly open source hack nights via PyLadies Berlin. 
And um, my idea was that I let participants freely choose what to work on um, because I didn't want to impose anything on them. And I thought, like, hopefully over time, I can build a community of like people um, historically marginalized in tech who are interested in open source and we can support each other. That was the idea. So I launched this and it went really well. People were super interested. But over time, the number of attendees dropped. So um, in March 2022, we had around like 10 participants, like previously like around 15, and then slowly it dropped. And then in May 2022, we had two participants. So it didn't work out. Something, something just really didn't work out. Um, people weren't coming back. And so I stopped doing that and thought about what I could do. And I did some troubleshooting. And um, so the reasons for the declining number of participants was that, first of all, we had no mentors of um, the open source projects that people wanted to contribute to present. And it was really hard for people, like it was for me previously, to find easy issues that they could work on. And so generally, they felt overwhelmed. And um, there was a bit of a mismatch of expectations because people were really hoping to like, make open source contributions and then weren't able to. And so what I then did, and um, then also what really helped was that um, Noah Tamir um, became part of the PyLadies Berlin team and um, was working on Pandas like she, was, she started to get paid for it. Oh, sorry, they, they started to get paid for it. Um, that really helped um, because then what we did was that we ran uh, mentored open source hack nights. And um, so Noah organized, like together with um, Patrick Höfler, the first contributing to Pandas Sprint, and um, then th uh, that started in December 22. And then there was another contributing to Pandas Sprint in January 2023. 20, and then we ran a contributing to Scikit-Learn Sprint and more contributing to Pandas Sprints. And Mariana, who's um, a contributor to the Jupiter project, and she's also a co-organizer of PyLadies Berlin. She um, organized a contributing to Jupiter Sprint. So like, we had a good number of sprints, and that was really great. And these, um, these uh, meetups were, or sprints were really popular. They were always fully booked out. There was always a waiting list. People were coming back. So that was, that was great. And um, here I can, I'll show you some impressions. On the top left, for example, you can see a photo Outlook, no, 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 no. Come on. <laughs> um, here on the, on the top left, you can see a photo of a contributing to Panda Sprint. And on the top, sorry, on the bottom left, you can see a photo, for example, of one of the um, contributing to scikit-learn events. And then also, for example, other PyLadies teams, they started similar initiatives. So for example, the PyLadies Paris team, they did something where they organized contributing to scikit-learn community, spr community sprints on a two-week cadence. So every two weeks, they um, had a contributing to scikit-learn sprint in the hope that this would um, attract some returning contributors and um, increase the diversity of the project. And that was the main aim, basically. And here you can see some photos of um, these events, and they were also super popular. And then also, for example, PyLadies Hamburg, they also recently ran a contributing to Panda Sprint, and it was also really popular, so really great. Um, so now that we ran a whole number of sprints um, in PyLadies, um, what are the achievements and challenges? And there are achievements for the community as well as the open source projects, and I'll first talk about the community. So we really strengthened the participants' professional, uh, professional profiles. Um, I know of one case where someone actually landed a good job and negotiated a really good salary because the prospective employer was impressed by her contributions to scikit-learn. And um, we also introduced participants to open source projects and um, did some community building. Like We could see that people were coming back. Um, they were attending repeatedly. were really interested. So that was great. And then the open source projects also got um, some, like something out of it. Um, for example, two people of the data umbrella sprints joined the contributor experience team, like one of them is me. 
And um, among the uh, participants of the PyLadies um, open source hack night, um, now is an intern um, of the Scikit-Learn project. She got hired as, uh, as an intern, so she actually g uh, gets paid for it, which is amazing. And then also one of the participants who was um, attending repeatedly is now um, a paid intern at the Pandas project. That's amazing. And Noah Tamir also recently um, joined the Pandas maintainer team, which is amazing. Um, but there are also still challenges. Um, so for example, to the best of my knowledge, there was no formation of like self-study groups, and I need to talk to people, but I have the impression that people generally don't have the bandwidth to organize this. And also, it's really hard to track the long-term effects of these. So for example, we didn't collect um, people's GitHub handles beforehand, and so like it's, it's hard to track how active people stay over time. And um, we didn't do that because it's a lot of work to do this, and um, we are a, ro a volunteer-run group. Um, so, yeah, we don't know the long-term effects, um, but um, something that, um, like some learning that came out of this is that um, what's really important for open source projects, if they want to increase their diversity, is that they need to mentor people, and um, these sprints that we ran and are running are really helpful for um, like checking who would be a potential candidate for mentoring. And um, so this is an action point I would like to leave you with. Um, so if, you are, if you're maintaining an open source project or are involved with an open source project, um, if you have the capacity to mentor people, like if you have the time and the finances, um, please do so. And this is the end of my talk. And I would like to thank a few people because um, at PyLadies Berlin, we wouldn't have been able to do all of this work ourselves or in general at PyLadies. And I would first like to highlight um, some people of the Scikit-Learn team, especially um, Reshma Sheikh. Um, the community sprints are based on what she has been doing for a number of years. Um, I would also like to highlight the work of Guillaume Lemaitre, who is also an organizer of this conference. Um, he has attended all the, co all the contributing to scikit-learn sprints, also traveling to Berlin twice, like has put, has put in like lots of work, um, also is mentoring the um, intern. Um, similar with um, Adrien Yalali, he also has um, run a number of contributing to scikit-learn sprints and is a really um, active mentor. I would also like to thank um, Marco Gorelli. He has been running, contributing to Pandas um, online sprints through um, PyLadies London for a while, and I think especially 2020 and 2021. And Patrick and Noah together, they have been running a number of contributing to Pandas sprints, and Yulis is also very active in, like, in mentoring. And I would also really like to thank the, the PyLadies Berlin team, especially um, Noah Tamir and Paloma Oliveira and Mariana Myrales. Without their help, all of this wouldn't have been possible. And I would also like to thank the PyLadies Paris team, especially Mo Moshe Rascu and Maria Talenchuk. Like they have been putting in lots of work to make um, the sprints happening. And also Teresa Yofsu, who also put in a lot of work to make the sprint happening. And yeah, you can connect with me on social media. I'm mainly active on Mastodon and LinkedIn, uh, sorry, GitHub on LinkedIn, not so much, um, and Twitter, uh, not sure. <laughs> Maybe not anymore. Um, yeah, so that's the end of my talk. Uh, thank you very much, and yeah, let me know if you have questions. Thank you, Maren. Um, there is, uh, yeah. Hi, thank you, Maren, for the talk. Well, I was a bit excited to ask my question. Uh, so, so, yeah, th thank you for sharing this. Uh, one question that comes to mind also as organizer of PyLadies is that uh, open source communities is all around the world and gathering core devs and people that actually can help us to mentor uh, or having these uh, sprints is uh, financially will cost. And uh, um, how do you suggest that we go forward and uh, uh, create a community that can support uh, actually organizing this uh, this mentors uh, mentor programs uh, i mean a bit broader not locally so a bit broader in the sense like not only through pi ladies or uh, having different open source projects involved because uh, mm. we are 
I mean, we are um, limited to uh, locally in what we, we can have access, for instance, in close by countries in Europe, for instance. Yeah. Um, that's a really good question. Um, yeah, we are trying to um, work with more projects. Um, like, for example, um, yeah, Noah Tami has worked with um, the uh, NumPy project before, but this is still in, within the data science realm, so it would be nice to like, have some like, completely um, different projects. And, um, for example, um, at one of the sprints, um, um, Antonio Cuni from PyPy was present, and he wanted to help out, and um, that was really nice of him. And then he realized, like, oh, actually, at PyPy, so like PY, PY, um, we don't actually have easy issues. And that made him realize, like, oh, actually, um, it's really hard to like get like get into the community and like start contributing. So that is also a really valuable learning experience, or that was a really valuable learning experience for him. And um, so yeah, hopefully in the future we can work with more projects, like reach out to them and like ask them if they would be willing to work with us. And yeah, yeah, hopefully they'll do. <laughs> All right, we have time for one more question. Thank you, Marin. I recently started sponsoring Gnome Focus on the GitHub. So what would be the way to sponsor PyOladies, if there are any? Like, can I contribute somehow to greater good? Yes, so I mean, we're always looking for mentors. So that's the first step. Um, yeah, otherwise, um, like in terms of donations, we don't really accept donations because um, money always comes with uh, certain responsibilities. Um, but yeah, generally um, supporting our events, um, for example, um, last year at PyLadies Berlin, we ran a um, Getting Started with Python event, and um, we were looking for mentors for that. Um, so that's, that's general, generally really helpful. Also, like um, sharing social media um, tweets and posts and yeah, things like that. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, yeah, thank you so much, Dr. Machen, for coming here and for your talk. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs>